discretion. I guess I don't understand. I'm sorry. Um, you, you sort of seem to be distinguishing as of right in the exhaustion context. And I, can you say again why you think that a situation in which the particular mechanism at issue is the motion for reconsideration um, that can be filed, it's available, but what does it mean to you when the statute says the particular mechanism has to be available as of right? It's a mechanism, it's a procedural mechanism that you have the right to file and it's capable of giving you some relief. And so but, for but example- I don't think as of right is doing any work in that analysis. If, it, it, if you file it and you have a right to file it, then it's available. But what does it mean for it to be available as of right? I thought that meant that the recipient of it, the agency or the administrative body, has no choice but to grant the motion. And by grant, I mean give you reconsideration. It's non-discretionary in terms of their reaction to it. So lower court appeals are non-discretionary. You have a right to appeal. It's as of right, and the lower court has to review your repeal. By contrast, a cert petition is not as of right. You have the right to file it. We receive it but we don't have to review it, that's discretionary. So if I'm right about that, am I using as of right in the, in the appropriate way or the way you understand it or not? That's not the way we understand okay. it in the statute. And I think actually the certiorari example is a good one because when we say that certiorari is not available as of right, what we're not talking about is the right to file a petition for certiorari. What we're talking about is the right to review on certiorari. And why isn't that exactly what we're talking about here? Because I don't think that should be the inquiry in an exhaustion requirement. We don't want to know whether if you file it, you're entitled to relief. We want to know if you, you're, if you file it, you're entitled to have the agency consider your arguments. And that's what we want. That's what we want to have happen. That's the entire structure. No, no, no. Of but but if you're talking about a motion for reconsideration, it's the same. You're, are, does the agency have to consider your arguments on reconsideration? If they do, then it's as of right. Only we know in this context they don't. That you could you have a right to file it, but just like a cert petition, they can say we don't want to look at this motion for reconsideration, and and that's all. I, th I think that's not correct, Your Honor. As, as I mentioned earlier to Justice Thomas, I think that the right understanding of how a motion to reconsider works is that if you have a meritorious claim and it's not blocked by other procedural defects, for instance, that you failed to raise it earlier when you should have and things like that, so you have an impermissible fact-finding claim and you brought it at the right time and for the right reasons, and the agency nonetheless denies a review because they simply don't feel like granting it, because they simply don't want to give you relief, that would be an abuse of discretion in this context. 